Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Superstars of Wrestling Review Series here on Pro Wrestling Logic, this time for the 18th of May in 1991. Um, we are moving quickly towards the summer. We are a couple of months away from Summer Slam, second biggest pay-per-view of the year at this point. Eventually Royal Rumble takes that role, but that doesn't happen until 93, 94, something like that. Anyway, the Ultimate Warrior is here. Um, one of the few times post his championship loss that he, uh, or actually, wait, 1991, yeah, he had lost the championship to Slaughter in January. So, yes, post-championship loss that he uh, is on TV, it seems, on Superstars anyway. I mean, they still have been doing house show matches and Madison Square Garden and the like, but not nearly on TV as often as he was, 89, 90 and so. Uh, smashes his opponent, the Legion of Doom, kind of floundering a little bit here in 1991. Uh, Smash bumps around and... Takes a few punches and kicks from the Warrior. Uh, Smash gets a bit of a advantage with some choking. Mr. Fuji on the outside of the ring with Smash, although not seen predominantly. Smash does take over for a few minutes, and the Warrior eventually comes back with his traditional clotheslines, among other things. Gets himself a victory relatively quickly. The whole affair with shoulder tackles, clotheslines, and all of that takes under eight full minutes. Warrior gets his victory, and then we go to a review of, on update, the attack on the big boss man last week. As, as mentioned in our last episode, the boss man gets uh, shock-sticked by the bounty a few times. Thanks to the assault by the Nasty Boys, Mountie basically says that... Uh, that um, boss man doesn't know his place, doesn't know how to take punishment or orders. Speaking of punishment, uh, Power and Glory, Hercules and Roma in their big uh, su suplex snapover. Still amazed that they come back after the WrestleMania 7 30 40 second loss. But they do. Uh, shot to the top of the head by Roma. Roma is in phenomenal shape at this point in his journey, and I still love their finish, the superplex by Hercules, the uh, power splash from the top by Roma. Uh, we go to the event center, Greg Valentine cuts a very benign promo about you know, finally being his own man in the WWF, not listening to Jimmy Hart anymore, Bobby Heenan hypes Rick Rude being the guy, I'm sorry, not Rick Rude, Kurt Henning, his Intercontinental Champion being a guy that everyone can believe in. And the Bulldog will be eliminated eventually. IRS comes to the ring for what I believe is his television debut. Definitely his Superstars debut. Uh, in a business suit, mind you. Uh, white shirt, red suspenders, black pants, and business shoes. It must have been hard to wrestle in. At least I figure it would be. Anyway, enhancement talent match. Big suplex. By Shyster pretty early, and um, IRS drops elbows and the like. Of course, he was here for 1984, 85, part of 86, I'm pretty sure. Maybe left in 85, but a former tag team champion. Under his actual name of Mike Rotundo with Barry Windham. Uh, they do not acknowledge this here. Um, then we go to post that match. He hits a clothesline. For a finish. Uh, actually, no. Samoan drop. He had not switched to the clothesline yet. Samoan drop for the finish. One, two, three. They do call it the write-off. They eventually call the clothesline the same thing. We go to an event center promo. Tugboat uh, promises that he is going to uh, make fun for all the fans. Uh, the Undertaker 
basically says he's going to put an end to the Ultimate Warrior. He says this through Paul Bearer, of course. Uh, and then we move on to British Bulldog Davy Boy Smith. Uh, still undefeated. He is uh, going at it with an enhancement talent. Basically tips up. Get some arm bars, arm ringers, and really basic moves. Uh, clothesline in the corner, big power slam, and a vertical suplex is the extent of the offense of this match for the Bulldog. Bulldog has Winston along with him. Interview by Gene Oakland of Ted DiBiase and Sensational Sherry. Sherry basically says that uh, Virgil needs to be worried about DiBiase. DiBiase does the majority of talking. Basically says he's going to render... Virgil as ineffective as he always was, and Piper will be handled accordingly. Piper has to be reminded not to leave the ringside area for fear of losing his announcing gig. Jake Roberts is our next uh, wrestler of the moment, along with his relatively new snake, Lucifer. They say Lucifer is bigger. I, From what I remember, they rented snakes, not at Snakes R Us, but at rent, reputable pet stores from towns where they were in uh, the area. Anyway, uh, Roberts tips up, gets some really basic moves, clothesline, punch out of the corner, knee lift, and the short clothesline, followed by the DDT, dumps Damien on, or dumps Lucifer on his opponent, and things are done. We go to a WBF commercial. They hype the World Bodybuilding Federation, we come back, Bobby Heenan and the Barbarian is our fair of the moment. They go less than two minutes, maybe not even a minute and a half. Uh, Barbarian with some big kicks relatively quickly. Uh, punches his opponent who's laying across the top turnbuckle and relatively defenseless. Big body slam and eventually the Barbarian just... Uh, annihilates his opponent. And then we see the Rockers cut an inset promo for the event center. Basically, Shawn Michaels actually tells the fans to shut up about their criticism of the Rockers, which I found kind of heelish. Don't know where that's coming from, but maybe it's going somewhere. Slaughter promises to get the World Championship back. Take care of Hogan, take care of Duggan, and uh, teach the American people how to behave, basically, is what he's implying. But that is our uh, event for today. We'll be back with more right after this. <laughs> 